Hey guys, I'm gonna do a twofer here. I'm gonna do uh, an update on the 23 KTM 350 XCF, which just surpassed 30 hours. And I'm also gonna do a race recap. Why am I doing a race recap staring at a bike? Well, that's because my GoPro shit the bed. Yep, brand new GoPro, just got it like two months ago because my old one died and this one died. So I think I may be done with these freaking GoPros. I'm gonna get the thing replaced under warranty and probably sell it. Anybody looking for a GoPro Hero 12, hit me up. I'll make you a good deal. Got a bunch of accessories for it, batteries and stuff. So anyway, moving on. Just did the uh, Armadillo Enduro first ever Enduro there at the this new property. And man, was it amazing. I'm so pissed I don't have video footage. What I did do for you guys, I asked a fellow racer if I can borrow his footage and I linked it in the description below. So go check out his video. Give him a like, subscription if you enjoy it. But uh, yeah, so you'll see every test. This freaking Enduro had everything. It had tight technical woods. It had flowing fast sections, no big open grass areas. I mean, oh, it was so good. Only problem, yeah, we got a lot of rain. So it turned out to be an absolute mutter. As you'll see in the video, it's starting to sprinkle. That was the course at its best. So it just started to rain and the course just, you send 400 riders through it and it just got worse and worse. But anyway, third place, first podium, B class. I'm just mad I don't have any video footage of it happening. <laughs> Bike did amazing. You know how many flame outs? Zero. Zero. No flame outs. If you watch my St. Mary's Shoals video from that Enduro, even with the Recluse, yep, how many freaking flame mounts did I have? A bunch. That was annoying. We fixed it. How did I fix it? If you haven't watched my videos, Vortex ECU. That's how we fixed it. So with the Vortex ECU, it's um, not just the Vortex ECU. The biggest part of that Vortex ECU is it was tuned by Jamie at Twisted Development. And I don't know what kind of magic that guy does, but holy moly, this bike runs amazing. If you haven't watched the video, go check it out. Just to do quick little recap of that video, it's got power everywhere, more power everywhere, excuse me. The throttle is so smooth and the bottom end torque on this motor, oh, I, I'm speechless. It just works so well. You retain the use of your, your maps, uh, I'm sorry, your map switch. White, na white map now is his best map. That is always your number one map. You cannot change that. So that's always his map number one. Green map now on this bike is whatever you select the ECU, it's got 10 map settings. Whatever map you have it set on, that is now your green map. You still get the use of traction control. You gain the use of quick shift because this is an XCF, not an SX. You did not have that quick shift capability before. So I gained that as well. Um, can't say anything more about how great that that tune is. Uh, every map I've tried so far, I've tried a torque map, I've tried the like customer's favorite least amount of engine braking. That map was good. I've tried, which I have a, a call into Twisted Development because I wanna know the last map I just ran on this bike was um, the map one with negative three. And I'm guessing it's taking three degrees out of the timing. Maybe someone can tell me. I don't know. That's why I'm just wanted confirmation because there's a couple of those maps. There's that and there's a negative two and negative one, I believe. Uh, but whatever. Uh, but whatever that map is, it is damn good. And that's almost my favorite map. I rode in that map a lot, probably three quarters of the Enduro yesterday because it just feels a little softer on the bottom, but the top end, friggin' animal. I was in third gear on a, a pretty nice flowing trail, and as I came out of a turn, I'm probably mid part of third gear, you know, mid-range, 
And I just hammered it in third gear, head over the freaking number plate, and that thing's wheeling down the straight on me, just very controlled. I'll give you a little clip next time I'm on a open straightaway. Here's a little bit, actually. Is the heart rate going? But the power is fantastic. Sorry, I, I keep ranting about that ECU, but by far, that is my favorite mod. I love my suspension, but that ECU is magical. That tuning, I should say, by, by Jamie at Twisted Development. Amazing. Okay, so uh, KYB spring conversion. Technical touch. Hopefully this can get it. It's a little dark in here. I'm sorry, guys. Technical touch, spring conversion kit, KYB. Bextech did the work for me. Who He's here in Florida. GNCC valving and Racetech gold valves were used in there. Rear shock stock spring because it fits my weight. But I did do, excuse me, did do a bladder kit. Racetech gold valve internals as well. So, um... Biggest thing I can say about the suspension, super plush, holds up pretty well. Um, I thought it, would hold, it held up amazing, but it is getting a little softer on me. So I don't know if it's just um, time to turn the clickers a bit, add a little more compression, but I'm starting to bottom it in certain areas. So we'll see about that. I'll follow up if maybe I did gain a few pounds too. That's probably... A problem I gotta cut the nonsense out it's the holidays though you know all right sorry recluse 4.0 auto clutch it's not just the regular clutch it is the auto clutch got the adjustable slave cylinder over on this side you know to adjust your free play gain if you don't know about that you got to watch some videos just quickly to explain that, like almost like adjusting your free play, you know, on a regular clutch. But this one, uh, you're adjusting it to tune. Well, first of all, you're, you're adjusting it to make sure you're not slipping the clutch too much and you're not going to fry a set of discs. But the second part of it is you're looking for between a quarter inch of free play and an eighth of an inch. Quarter inch, you're gonna get more slip, very, very smooth delivery of power. If you set it closer to eighth of an inch of free play, you're gonna get a much punchier um, engagement, right? So it's just gonna hit a little harder. I like both, but right now I'm closer to the eighth, and this is just me. I guess I'm just freaking paranoid. Like, I don't, I almost don't want it to slip too much and start frying a set of you know uh clutch plates but anyway so that's the recluse that was amazing for that mutter because uh only a couple of times did i really need it where i had my freaking feet off the pegs and you know basically skiing in some mud and i hit a log and it kind of threw me towards a tree and i, <laughs> I just wound up both feet down and stopped and you know no stalling because i had the recluse aside from that though i didn't really need it need it too many times you know because i still use my clutch a lot guys i don't i'm not one of those guys who don't doesn't use their clutch anymore because i got a recluse i actually still use the clutch to for power control and stuff too uh so that's that we covered, how about the Mako 360? Mako 360, this guy is definitely a nice bonus because I like the way it just gives me a little bit of flex. It's very unobtrusive though, so you don't feel it working. It just works in the background. And uh, I got my, still have my 23, KTM 250XC, I'll be riding at this weekend. I'm going out to KTM World up in uh, near Atlanta, Georgia. So we're going to see that going back to Air Forks, no Mako, and yeah, it's just a stock bike. So still love that thing and raced it all last season in C-Class, and it did great. KTM ready to race, and I just wanted to test it.
Yeah, no issues. So what else can I tell you? I went um, from 1449, no, 1447 in the rear, stock. Now I'm 1449. So Renthal, Sprocket, up two teeth in the rear. And that helped low down Grunt because I thought this thing was geared just a little too tall. Uh, no, not really necessary. I tested it the other day and I wasn't at the limiter. I did 82 miles an hour. Where the hell am I going? 82 miles an hour. So yeah, I may even think about going up another tooth. And I did the rear sprocket only instead of doing the front because, you know, it's easier to just change a rear sprocket, you know? So if I want to just play around with a little bit, I got the 47, got a 49 and added bonus. They also work for two stroke. So there you go. Uh, FMF power core hex. Basically, did this mod simply for, which not in there right now, but I did that for Spark Arrestor. Just because some of the places I ride, I, it's required, so that's why I did that. Truth be told, I didn't feel much um, of a difference with that. So, don't know. But, it sounds good. <laughs> Uh, what else can I tell you? Yep, ODI grips. I switched to these. I think, what are they, the Rogue MX or something for a little more squish? Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, take out some of the harder hits and stuff from coming up through my arms, wrists, shoulders. That's it. But anyway, this uh, bike is running amazing. So my build is probably almost complete. I'm sure I've got a couple of little things I would like to do, want to do, need. Probably don't need anything. I think it's done. So yeah, maybe a set of wheels down the road, but we'll see. I'm only saying that because my 250s rims, I don't know anybody with the 23 and up with the XCS because the SXs still come with Excel wheels. My rear spokes on my 250 XE Man, they've been loose a bunch of times. Killing me. I've had to adjust those things so many times. Tighten them up. But anyway, um, I think that's all I got to say. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you did. That's if you like my content. If you don't like my content, sorry. There's plenty of other people to go watch. Anyway, guys. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to hitting up KTM World and I got another camera to record some video footage. So hopefully we get some cool riding footage from this weekend. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Bye bye.